Section 9 of the National Geographic Magazine, Volume 5. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Phil Schempf. An Undiscovered Island Off the Northern Coast of Alaska, Part 1, by Marcus Baker. On a map of the polar regions published in Gotha 11 years ago, land is indicated as existing about 150 miles north northeastward from point barrow the northernmost point of alaska the position of this land is latitude 73 and one half degrees north and longitude 153 one half degree west of greenwich i have not succeeded in finding this land indicated on any other map neither have i found any published statement respecting it in the summer of 1849, Callet and Moore, in the Arctic search vessels Herald and Plover, cruised in the Arctic Ocean between Point Barrow and Herald Island, searching for Sir John Franklin. It was during this cruise that Herald Island was discovered and landed upon, and the high peaks of what we now know to be Wrangell Island were seen to the westward. In the map accompanying their report, an appearance of land is shown in latitude 72 and one half degrees north, longitude 161 and one half degrees west of Greenwich, being about 130 miles northwest of Point Barrow. On a small map accompanying Osborne's stray leaves from an Arctic journal, land is indicated in the same locality, as also on an undated map published by Longman in London in 1850 or 1851. Russian Hydrographic Chart Number 1495, published in 1854, also shows land here, with a note, Indications of Land According to the Report of the English Sloop Plover in 1849. These four maps are the only ones out of a considerable number examined by me which show this appearance of land, and they are all obviously derived from the same authority, viz. Kellett and Moore. In Kellett's narrative, the only reference to this appearance of land is the following statement at page 14. This was our most northern position. Latitude 72 degrees 51 minutes north, longitude 168 degrees west. The ice, as far as it could be seen from the masthead, trended away west-southwest, compass. Commander Moore and the ice master reported a water sky to the north of the pack, and a strong ice blink to the southwest. It appears obvious from this statement that the evidence of land existing here is very slight. The appearance of land is omitted from all the late maps. It does not appear on the British Admiralty charts, nor on the charts of our own hydrographic office or coast survey. Indeed, on hydrographic chart 68, a sounding of 54 fathoms, muddy bottom, is shown in this place. It is clear, I think, that land does not exist here. Now, on the circumpolar map first mentioned, the land shown north-northeast to Point Barrow is about 150 miles northeast of the place where Kellett's appearance of land is shown. I had supposed, before examination, that these indications referred to the same thing, but having made an examination, I am of the opinion that the indication of land shown on the circumpolar map is not derived from Kellett and Moore, but from some unpublished source of information. That there is an undiscovered or rather unvisited land somewhere north and east of Point Barrow is a matter of common talk among the whalers who annually visit this region. Captain John Keenan of Troy, New York, master of the whaling bark Stambul of New Bedford, reports that he and all his crew saw it while on a whaling voyage sometime during the 70s. The Eskimos have traditions of this land and of a visit to it by their fathers long ago. The known facts respecting this hypothetical, or should we not say real, land are exceedingly meager and all unpublished. It has therefore seemed to me desirable to put these few facts on record, and that no place was more suitable than the journal of a society devoted to the increase and diffusion of geographic knowledge. The facts have all come to me through my old friend, Captain E. P. Herendine, who, at my request, 
has written the account to which these remarks are intended merely as an introduction. Captain Herondine, a native of Woods Hole, Massachusetts, has been for many years engaged in whaling. Having entered the Arctic in pursuit of whales as early as 1850, and has since then made more than a score of voyages to this region. I have had the pleasure of making three voyages to the North Pacific and Arctic Oceans in his company. In 1882-83, he was a member of the United States Signal Service Party stationed at Point Barrow. He is well acquainted with all the natives on the Arctic coast from the East Cape of Asia eastward to the mouth of the Mackenzie River. He speaks their language and is universally known to the natives of that region under the name of heretic. From the natives and through Captain Keenan of the whaling fleet, he has obtained the following information, which he has kindly written out for the National Geographic Society. I beg to suggest the desirability of calling this very little known land Keenan Island. End of section 9